my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. When you practice and you set goals, because that's an exciting thing, if you can say, I want to increase my speed on doing this lick or doing this chord progression perfectly with X number of clicks on the metronome, that's really helpful because you have something to aim at and the human brain loves that. That's why we love sports. We love that there's a simple goal. We need to, one team has to score more goals than the other and then they win. So we have to have a specific thing to aim at. And that's very motivating for most of us. But then there's a guy uh, uh, practicing guitar who is asking uh, the question, is it better to just say, let me see how much I can develop. Let me see how far I can go. If I practice like three or four hours a day or 30 minutes or whatever I have available to me, what will happen if I focus on that one three note lick or six note sequence or whatever it is, and I play it incessantly over and over again? Is that better? to be kind of open and say, what will happen if I do X, right? Or is it better to say, I want to aim at this level. I want to get <clears throat> at this level in a week. I want to increase my speed at 10 clicks on the metronome in a week or in a month or whatever it is. What's better, to have a goal or to just say, what will happen if? And I would say, it's hard to set a goal if you don't know how fast you develop, right? You have to have some kind of experience in what happens if I sit down and practice for three hours in front of the TV doing that lick in, in, in you know, focused, no, not focused because you're watching TV as you do it, but, you know, the two-step method we talk about in other parts of this YouTube channel. What happens if I do that? What results do I usually get? And once you have an experience of that, then you can start saying, okay, that would be really cool to see if I could go for 25% increase of speed in a month or in two months. But don't stop there, right? Because we want to, once you have that goal set up, you're going to ask yourself, okay, what do I just, you know, gut feeling, what would that take? If I had to increase my speed at 25% and your speed isn't everything, Klaus, no, but it's a good measure of developing your skills, right? But what would that take? Well, I think, you know, just off the bat, just no, two, two hours a day doing just that one pattern. Just if I, you know, whatever it is I'm practicing, just two hours of just doing that in front of the TV with the metronome for 30 minutes, where I really focus on the accents and getting, getting everything right, building that pattern of almost being able to do it unconsciously, right? And then that is what it takes. That's your estimation. And, and, then, because once you have that decision in your mind, then you go for that increase. And then what happens is you practice that much every day, and then you get a result. And then you can evaluate and say, okay, did I really get the result I wanted? And then you get clever. Then you get really educated by yourself on what it takes to get what results. And that's where you start getting really excited. Because if you know exactly what it takes to get a 10%, 20% increase of speed in any given thing. Then you can, you get these, you, your mind just races with, okay, what if I could practice three hours a day? What if I could get even more focused? What if I could put in some practice? You know, you start saying, okay, can I develop twice as much in a month? And you can start with a calculator. You can sit down and say, okay, the X, Y, Z, and then I can get to this point. And it becomes a science rather than the old, well, you just practice a lot, right? You know exactly what you did and you know exactly what you got out of it. And then you can adjust and, and try something new and see how that works. And then you get into this cool uh, situation where you're really trying to develop as fast as possible and you, you try new methods and you try to tweak and, and practice more and practice with more focus and being more passionate about it. You use the principles we talk about in these YouTube videos and the programs on our website, guitarmastery.net. Um, and then you start getting really, and that increases your confidence. And if there's something that holds you back more than anything else, it's, it's self-doubt. We all have that because you haven't seen yourself do it yet because you can't do it at the level you want. You can't play that whatever it is at the skill level you want. 
So you haven't seen it, you haven't felt it. And so you're going to doubt yourself all the way to mastery. But that's just natural. But when you start using math and you start saying, okay, how much can I develop in a week? Okay, what if I did that for four weeks? So I, okay, two and a half hours gave me this result. What if I practiced more? What if I was more focused? What if I was even more passionate? What if I thought about it, visualized it all day, playing this pattern? What works? How can I get there faster? Then you start really being certain that you can get there because you see the progress, but I see the progress because I know I was far better than I was a year ago, but you don't see the progress. You don't. It's like watching your kids grow. You don't see it. There has to, somebody else has to come into your house and say, wow, they've really grown. And you go, well, I guess they have when I look at the pictures, right? You have to take pictures of your development. You have to be conscious about what actions produce what results in order for you to really get excited about what you can do. In, in, if you don't measure and really do these things and, and very conscious and evaluate and try to get better at it, all you do is practice and you don't see how great, how good you become. So there's nothing to get excited about. <laughs> so you're not excited. So you don't, you don't really get into it full on. You don't get obsessed with practicing because what's there to be obsessed about, right? You don't really experience the growth. You don't see it on a piece of paper. So if you get 10% better at picking, which is a lot in a month, because you can get 100% twice as good in 10 months, right? Or you could tweak it and become 20% as good in a month, which, okay, five months I could get twice as good as, you see how that works, right? And if you do that, there's something to be really excited about. When you practice, you're not bored doing repetitive patterns because, you, okay, that was 100. Yeah, one hour, oh, that was 1,000. Okay, oh, that was 2,000 today. Okay, next day, 2,000. And you really, you get excited about the basics of practicing, right? Instead of getting you know, entertained by all the fabulous ways of, of trying to get there faster, practicing with speed and all of this uh, mumbo jumbo, right? And you get into the basics, you build your skills, you have hundreds of thousands of repetitions. It's like, it's amazing, right? That's the way to get there. So to just get back to the question, is it best to focus on just seeing what happens if you practice X hours or with X amount of focus and so on? Or is it best to you know, set yourself goals? And I recommend doing both. And of course, you little, need a little experience. See how far you get with doing X in one week, times that up four weeks, say, that's my goal. Or I'm going to push that limit a little bit, see if I can get better than my little calculation here. What would it take for me to get twice as good? Well, then use the principles we're talking about, right? And practice more, uh, more passion, more enthusiasm, more focus when you practice, more concentrated effort into one tiny little thing and then overwhelm it with power, all the other principles we've been talking about. That's the way to get to it. And that's the way to you know, get really excited and obsessed with practicing is because you know it works. Most people don't see 10% improvement. You do and get excited about it because you know you can, you can increase that and you can get there even faster. And you know... When you know when you get there, you can be re excited about it, right? If I told you it's Christmas Eve, you're going to get a gazillion dollars in everything you ever wanted sometime in the future. I am? And you don't know if it's 100 years or 10 years or do I have the talent, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you have this uncertainty. So what's there to get excited about? Maybe, right? But when you know what you're going to achieve in the next four weeks, that's something you can get excited about without you know, risking getting you know, terribly disappointed because you know it's a science. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it, do it now, do it.